Berebla Tech channel. Today we're going to discuss or briefly talk about security, the issue of security, how to be safe on. Now, internet has become part of us and it's not going to leave us anytime soon. I mean, it has become part of us and this is a time where we'll be living with internet. We connect internet with our mobile phones, we connect internet with our laptops, we connect internet with our smart watches, we connect internet with our computers, even the electronics and devices we use at home has now become smart, I mean internet enabled. Now, how do you protect yourself? How do you become safe online whilst using these devices via the internet? Today, I am going to take you through five things that you should not do when you are online. Yes, five things you should not do when you are online. I mean, when you are connected online. These things are going to be some guides that if you can adhere to, then your safety can be secured when you are online. Number one, the first thing you should not do when you are connected online is to click on suspicious links. You understand? Do not click on suspicious links. When I say suspicious links, I mean links that you are not familiar with. Many times, because of the nature of access to internet via our mobile phones, it's very easy for you to receive links from friends, families, colleagues. Some links can come in the form of lottery ones, some can come in price ones, some can come even from legitimate assumption or assuming legitimate institutions it could be from your bank it could be from other well-known organizations but the issue here is that i call it suspicious because if you have no idea what that link is for do not just click on it now somebody may ask how do i know what is a suspicious link or this link it's not legitimate I have a video on how to determine a suspicious link. If you want to know how, if you want to know if a link or even a file is not genuine or it's virus prone or whatever, I have a video on that. Item number two, what you should not do when you are online. Two, make sure that you do not fall for phishing attempts. Phishing attempt. Now, somebody will ask me, what is a phishing attempt? Phishing is basically where attackers impersonate organizations or individuals in tricking you to reveal very sensitive information about you. This information could be your bank details. This information could be about address to locate you. This information are connected personally directly to you and when they have access to it, that will be the end of you. So, these phishing attempts can come in different forms. And I can tell you that a lot of us may have fallen victims to that. And these phishing attempts are based on well-known organization or individuals. So let's say you can have um, a mail or an email from your telco, you understand? Which we all know that, oh, come on, this is my telecom company. And they could put, uh, put the name of a telecom company and then add in a, a slash and then add another link. Probably some of the slash the app becomes login or verify or security and all that. Hey, be very careful of those things because by the time you click those links, automatically they redirect you to the attacker's detailed video on the phishing attempt where you will be able to determine what is a legitimate URL address and what it is not. You'll be able to identify when it comes to such mails. So that video is also there it's on my channel. You can watch that. I wouldn't want to be making all my videos very lengthy. I wouldn't want to compound everything so that you can be able to watch them and have a better understanding. But hey, the comment section is still there. If I've said something and you don't have an understanding, just put it there and I'll explain it later or I'll redirect you to a video if I have made a video of such topic. Thank you. Now, number three, using weak or repeated password. Yes, using weak or repeated password. Most of us don't really pay a lot of priority when it comes to our password. We always want to use the things that we are familiar with so that we will be able to remember. But hey, that's not the purpose. That's not the only purpose of getting a website, uh, a password. It's important to use a password that you remember. 
But then, use the password that cannot be what? Decrypted. A password that cannot be hacked. A password that cannot be determined easily by somebody or an attacker. We find ourselves using birthdays, uh, names of our pets, our last name, middle names, names of our parents, our kids, all for password. Those are no more. We don't need it. No, no. For you to get a strong and then a very efficient password, I would advise you to go in for the passphrase. Passphrase is a new form of set using to set your password. How, what is a passphrase? A passphrase is a multiple words or which, a multiple words combination of symbols, letters, numbers. And by the end of the day, you craft a very long sentence as your password. This one can literally be safe from attackers. Now, for example, if I say, my dog likes to run in the park. My dog likes to run in the park. This is a sentence, but it can become a password. Why? What I'm going to do is that I'm going to pay attention to the words, make some capital letters, make some small numbers, change some of the letters even to numbers or symbols that can that I can remember. So my can be small letter or capital as M. Like can be anyway. Death can become instead of me writing T H E, I can put D A. It sounds that you understand it, but I know what it means. So a passphrase is the best form of password that you can set for yourself. We are no more in an era where you have to use your birthdays, your uh, names of pets, and all that. These are not good. So be cautious of repeating password or using. Uh, how about big? All right. Security issue number four: ignoring software updates. Most of us cry for our data, so due to that, we always want to run away or swerve the software updates. Whether it's on our phones, it's on our tablets, it's on our laptops, or our desktop computers, or any device that needs periodic updates. But hey. Updates are very, very important. When the developer has designed their device or software, they cannot tell what it can do for a lifetime. Over a period of time, they need to update the software or the device. This will be able to protect you from maybe attackers in the form of viruses or hacking your system. So updates are very, very important. If you have any device that's internet enabled, periodic update helps to fix bugs, help to fix patches that can prevent attack on your device or your system. So please don't overlook update. Don't overlook software update on any internet enabled device that you use. Thank you. Okay, so number five, which is the final thing that we look at if you want to stay safe online ignore privacy settings now we buy a lot of internet enabled devices we download softwares for this our devices now with these devices or systems they are privacy settings the developer make sure you agree to its privacy settings so you can use the services or softwares but then because sometimes we think or we feel or see the privacy settings quite cumbersome or quite uh, so much to read, we just scroll down and then we do what? We accept it that I agree to the terms. But hey, you may not see the importance or the need of it, but if you want to stay safe online from attackers and the, any form of uh, hackers, you must make sure that when you're downloading software or when you're updating devices, you have to read the privacy settings. Now, in this privacy settings, there are certain clauses that you are expected to agree to or not to agree. This will give them the rights to let you use that software. Some software developers or designers need to uh, share your personal information, such as your name, your personal details, your age, your location. Location is very, very important. To enable them, what? 
rebuild or improve their services as well. Or some of these devices or systems have agreement or partnership with third party companies or third party associates. Now, these third parties also need information on the users of these apps or software or devices. So, any software developer or designer or system probably have that kind of agreement. So, they need your information, which can also be accessed by the third party company. So, if you do not read your agreement well and you just scroll down and accept, Remember, if it's a device or a system where they have to release some of your information to third party companies, then it means you are giving them the go ahead to do that. Now, these third parties, you are not aware of what they use your information for. Some will say they are for advertising purposes to help you improve the software. But what happens when they are using it? Are there other people that have access to this data that you also do not know? Meanwhile, it is just one system or software that you sign up with. So it's very important that you always read your privacy settings on any device or systems or software that you find yourself using. This can help you to save online. Thank you so much for staying tuned and watching. Continue to hit the notification button. Share this video to somebody who, has, who, who doesn't know about this channel because you may be doing the person so good. And invite friends, families to subscribe to this channel as well. There are more videos that I'll be sharing with you. Like I mentioned earlier in this, in this video, there are a lot of deeper or detailed videos under every topic that I have just mentioned. Just watch them if you're interested in a particular topic. There is more on the way for you. This is your number one tip.